Now, how does one give technical advice to a science fiction series set either in the past or the future? <clears throat> it depends on the episode and the writer entirely. You know, some of the writers are more character driven, some are more techie driven, and it just depends entirely on the episode. Some, like for example, Bradley Thompson and David Webb, will tend to write the more techie episodes. They will actually consult um, from the very beginning with the. Um, when we got the green light for season two, I got this thing, I got a call from Brad Bradley Thompson. He said, okay, great, we're doing season two. So, here's the situation we want. How do we get into it? How the hell do we get out of it? <laughs> and, and then we work through that, I'm a little scattered thing. But sometimes, they don't need my help from the onset, so I get this every script and I just go through and make comments. And sometimes if they need a tech word, they'll write tech in brackets. So it ranges from being involved from the onset to just writing a word here and there. And in fact, in the beginning of season three, they actually brought me to Universal. And we're, they were going to get serious about finding Earth. What kind of portents can we find? What are good? What's bad? And we actually did a PowerPoint presentation and, um, and told them we need to look for pulsars. Clusters, constellations, bad. So, so in one case, I actually did a whole presentation, and, and a lot of those things you'd actually use. Cool, thanks. Over here. Hi, I'm Sarah. Um, here's my question for each one of you. When you guys signed on, and did you guys go, oh crap, we're going to end up doing conventions? Or did you say, Frank, yeah, we're going to be doing conventions? <laughs> I think I answered that. I think uh, Michael Lincoln and I were the last ones to be able to understand what this really was all about. And it is about saying thank you to the people who have supported us and brought us to this level of understanding. So uh, uh, the only, the first one in was the guy at the end of the chief who definitely you all know by first name. And he knows you all by first name. So. <laughs> so. He, from the get-go, has become the biggest, uh, you know, understander of this whole concept of saying thank you back to the, um, to really the fans that have made this thing possible. So, I, I think um, uh, between the other guys, I think you both jumped on pretty quickly, didn't you? James, did you jump on? Um, I actually really did genuinely learn a lot from Aaron because I was really of Eddie's mind. I was like. Oh, you know, I'm an actor, and, and when they shout cut on the set, my job's finished. And Aaron said to me, uh, buddy, it's so wrong about... It. We heard about convention... I didn't even know what a convention was before Battle <laughs> Star Galactica. And several people went, are you going to do those crazy conventions? I was like, what are they talking about? Uh, I don't know. And uh, I went to one, but I can't remember when it was. I, I didn't feel all, all that comfortable, and I was like, I don't think I'm going to go and do this again. And it was Aaron who kind of took me aside and was like, it's really important, James. The show hasn't finished when they shout cut. This is about all of the fans. This is about all of the people. It, it's about showing some inner generosity to all of the people who are putting us in this position. So um, I actually have to thank Aaron for uh, putting me on the straight and narrow that way. different standpoint, a different perspective, I am a colossal nerd. <laughs> I came to Dragon Con for years before I was even on the show. So, I, <laughs> and now I get to sit up here with these guys, I am in Nerdvana. <laughs> I was in the same position as James. I'd never done one. I'd always heard about them. I didn't really know what to expect. But uh, I don't know how many Douglas had done before me, but I know that I went to one. I don't know. Year. Do you, yeah, I, was the first, I think second year was my first one. I did a small one in Vancouver, which was small. Yes, yeah, SkateCon. There was, there was one of the six people that were there. <laughs> Yeah, uh, GateCon was very small. It was an ambitious project. I mean, they, they had the right intention. Yeah, I think Douglas and I did that together, actually. And they were trying to raise money for charity. and what, It just really didn't work that well. So that wasn't a good taste of what it was supposed to be like. But I think my first one was in London, and I did that with uh, with Aaron. It was good. Yeah, it gave me a good taste. It's nothing like this, though, man. We're talking 200 people <laughs> drinking pints of beer with them every night. And, uh, I don't know how many of you guys are out there. There's about 40,000, 40, something like that. Oh, this is nuts. I love Dragon Con, though. I did this two years ago with James and um, 
Douglas, and I think that was my first taste of like a big con and really enjoying it, like really, you know, feeling like you're a part of it 100%. We had too good of a time. <laughs> I uh, never, I kind of thought of uh, Battles of Clock uh, as a, uh, another to my question, as um, more of a military show. I never, it never really crossed my mind that I was doing a, a sci-fi show. And the conventions, uh, like Eddie says, I, I, I was aware of them, but never thought uh, that I would be involved in them at all uh, when this gig first came up. Uh, the only time it, I really thought it made, became I thought much about being involved in a sci-fi show is when I became a Cylon, aware that I was a Cylon. So you went there because how do you research being a Cylon? Right? Um, but as far as the the I I am so glad I came to this convention and it's um, it, uh, it's it's been an amazing experience. Uh, but when I signed on, it was not in my universe at all. I want to say one thing, and I'm very serious about this one. Um, something happened this year that uh, got me really aware of what this uh, community is all about, and it's an extraordinary uh, commitment to really just nothing more than really appreciating this genre and this whole understanding of what these mean. There was a junk con that was set up by somebody, and uh, this guy ended up doing what uh, is rightfully known as uh, a, a real major con job on all of us. And uh, anyway, for all of you that are that took part in, in trying to uh, help or try to become, you know, participate in this jump con extravaganza, we were taking advantage of us, all of us. I was on that list uh, as a, one of the participants, and so was Mary. And then we found out about three days before the first one in, in uh, Boston that uh, this thing was not going to work, and they said we're very apologetic. And then I found out that people were not getting their money back, and that people had spent a lot of money, and that this guy had made a lot of money. And so I'm now working with the Attorney General, and we're going to go after this guy. as much time as it takes to bring this bastard down. And, uh, to learn that he should not mess with Admiral Adama. <laughs> nor, nor the people that partake in these kind of conventions. So we will get to the bottom of this and uh, I'm going to try to get everybody their money back.